a wrestler's finisher should be their most important move in their arsenal and should naturally feel special to both the wrestler in question and the wrestling audience. Iconic moves such as the sweet chin music, the DDT, and even the frog splash at one stage were all legendary moves associated with legendary talent, but over the years these moves have been added to wrestlers move sets as normal moves and as a consequence they're not as special as they used to be. No doubt there's an argument that it's very hard to come up with creative moves that nobody has done before. Styles eyeing him! Oh, oh, the first cover. However, there is also the argument that these moves should be kept special, and if they're going to be used, then they should be kept solely as finishes rather than basic moves that don't feel special. Coming into the cruiserweight oh. division, and look at, let's say, Dorado with that springboard stunner. With that being said, join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE finishes that turned into normal moves. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos. And now Miz with the top rope! A splash! Number 1, The Spear. The spear was made famous by Goldberg in WCW. The move was intense, quick and looked absolutely devastating. As soon as Goldberg hit the move during his iconic WCW run, fans knew instantly that the match was over. The spear would later be used by the likes of Edge, spear, spear air. Rhino, Roman Reigns, and the other one just goes down. All of whom used and continue to use it as their finishing move, thus keeping the aura of the move intact. And despite this, there is a clear argument that the move is overused in today's WWE. Numerous wrestlers over the past 15 years have used the move as an interchangeable move, as if the move means nothing at all. Big E, was going over the top. Oh, Big e trails oh. Matt Riddle, Charlotte Flair Royce hasn't oh. forgotten what a spear all currently use this spear as a move and it's not even their finishing move the spear is one of those moves that should be kept as special as possible so that it remains meaningful for those select few who still decide to use it as a finishing move Lashley with a spear. He did it. intercepted rage Lashley wins number 2 the DDT and he delivers it no one has ever gotten up from two DDTs, I've never seen anybody get up from one. The DDT was made famous by WWE legend and Hall of Famer Jake the Snake Roberts in the late 80s. The move became legendary thanks to WWE protecting the move every time Roberts would hit it. It was rarely ever kicked out of, meaning that as soon as Roberts hit the move, the audience knew that match was over. Roberts was asked once what the letters DDT stand for, and he simply and appropriately replied, The End. Despite the efforts of Roberts and the WWE to protect the move, quite quickly the move became overused and began to feature in other wrestlers' movesets as a non-finishing move. Almost everyone seemingly on the WWE roster will use a DDT at some point, so they're rarely kept special, meaning that when a superstar such as Alexa Bliss decides to use the move as a finishing move, Uh-oh! There it is! Oh my god! Lights out! Fans don't buy it as a finisher due to the overuse by seemingly everyone on the roster. Stone Cold famously shared his disapproval of the fact that the move is overused and barely gets a two count on WWE television these days. Number 3, The Frog Splash. Don't do it! No! The Frog Splash was made famous by two people. Those two people being the late great Eddie Guerrero and Mr. Monday Night Rob Van Dam. The move when executed by these two men looked close to perfection as well as absolutely devastating. It would be that mine's better, that I go way higher. What's the matter with you, Holmes? The original, there's never better than the original, man. The move even won both of them their WWE Championships in 2004 and 2006 respectively. Despite this, after the tragic passing of Guerrero in 2005, the move seemed to be executed a lot more by other wrestlers. No doubt as a tribute, but the move was seemingly used as a signature rather than a finishing move, which damaged the aura surrounding the move. That is unless you count Vicky Guerrero using it as the Cougar Splash as she called it. Seth Rollins. Bad hip it all! Oh, 
Kevin Owens. Oh, splash! That's a power frog splash! Christian. I don't know if I agree with this strategy. I think Adam has won the oh. win. All gone to use the move, but none of them have actually won a match with the move, which is unfortunate as at one time the frog splash was one of the most illustrious finishes of all time. Number 4. The Top Rope Elbow I cannot believe Hogan would stoop to that elbow! A flying elbow! Punch the line! It was initially WWE Hall of Famer Macho Man Randy Savage who made the top rope elbow finishing move famous. Savage made the move stand out by having a basic arsenal that consisted of mainly heelish moves such as strikes and chokes, but he would also have one of the most popular finishes of all time. What a display here! Savage would point to the heavens and then soar into the air before coming crashing down on his opponent. The top rope elbow move became a lot more common in the 90s with Shawn Michaels using the move as a signature and Test using it as a finishing move. However, as the 2000s went on, several superstars opted to do a version of the famous move. This came especially after the passing of the legendary former WWE Champion in 2011. Talents such as CM Punk Bailey. Bailey top rope elbow. Oh, a little old to the Macho Man. And even the Big Show. Big oh, on the top rope. Oh, oh my God! Have all used the move in their matches as a signature move, no doubt as a tribute towards Savage himself. Kyrie Sane poised to deliver. Yo! Insane elbow. What impact! In recent years, Kairi Sane has introduced the WWE's audience to the Insane Elbow, a variation of Savage's finisher that is incredibly popular with the fans as it's executed to perfection and has a uniqueness in the execution that makes the move stand out. Number 5. The Neckbreaker Awakening coming up! There it is! Forget about it! I it's over! over. The name The Neckbreaker sounds devastating in itself, but during the 80s, the move was one of the most devastating moves WWE fans had ever seen. The Neckbreaker was made famous by Ravishing Rick Rude, who called his version of the Neckbreaker the Rude Awakening. The move looked like it legitimately injured wrestlers and often received gasps from the audience when Rude executed it. Since then, the Neckbreaker has become a basic transition spot with zero meaning. Almost everyone on the roster seemingly uses the move during a match or a variation of the established move. It's a massive shame that a move that had been previously protected on WWE television has just become another move and it's now as common in matches as a basic body slam. Number 6. The Leg Drop It has become deafening here in the Hoosier Hulk Hogan throughout the 1980s and into the 1990s was the biggest superstar in the wrestling world. This extended beyond the world of professional wrestling as he was truly a pop culture icon for America. Despite this, Hogan's in-ring ability has always been a criticism towards the WWE Hall of Famer and one of the things that fans specifically criticize is his finishing move. Monster looking to drop the leg, he did. Hogan would famously use a leg drop as his finisher, an extremely lackluster move, but it worked well and the crowd seemed to love the move. The move quickly turned into just another move. Wrestlers use a leg drop these days as much as they use a punch. No way! Oh! The move became so overused during the 1990s that when Hogan joined WCW in 1993, WCW renamed the leg drop the Leg Drop of Doom to make Hogan's finisher stand out and appear somewhat special. Number 7. The Frankensteiner. I think it's that oh, oh, yeah, watch out, watch out! Oh, bro. What the what? The Frankensteiner is one of the coolest looking wrestling moves there is. In case you're not familiar with the move, it involves two wrestlers on top of the turnbuckle, one of them then proceeds to perform a hurricane runner on the other. The move looks awesome and is guaranteed to achieve a huge pop from the live audience. But over the years, the move has been overdone so much that it has unfortunately simply become just another move in a match rather than a move that is saved as a finisher or is saved for big matches or moments. What does Bailey have in mind? The move itself was made famous by Scott Steiner in WCW, who appropriately named the move the Frankensteiner. It was also used by Chris Jericho as a finisher during his run in WCW. Jericho got him over! Cover! He got him! However, it's never used as a finisher anymore due to the overuse, which is a massive shame as it's truly one of the coolest looking wrestling moves out there. Number 8. Diving Crossbody 
Here comes Kofi Kingston. What a crossbody! Wait, Barrett's down! The diving crossbody that you see every week on WWE television, believe it or not, used to be incredibly rare and had an aura surrounding the high risk move. The time roll! The move was made famous by legendary wrestler and WWE Hall of Famer Ricky Steamboat, and Steamboat performed the move with such grace that it was one of the most popular finishers of the 80s. The move really took off as a finisher at the time, mainly because at the height of WWE's golden era in the 80s, moves from the top rope, never mind a finisher from the top rope, were extremely limited, and top rope moves were only used by a handful of WWE stars. But when WWE went into the 1990s and beyond, their style drastically altered, meaning more high-risk moves were added to wrestlers' arsenals, and this unfortunately resulted in the diving crossbody being one of the moves that has become a regular feature in matches. Number 9. The Sleeper Hold Now at one time, the sleeper hold was one of the most deadly moves in wrestling. The move was predominantly used as a finishing move in the 80s by the likes of Roddy Rowdy Piper, Brutus Beefcake, and Ted DiBiase. The crowd instantly knew when the hold was locked in that that match was going to be over, and it was extremely rare for someone to escape the move. The move was protected, and as a result, it meant something whenever Piper, DBRC, or Beefcake executed the move. Sadly, the move transitioned into a standard rest hold spot and was seemingly used by every wrestler in the world after the 80s. It feels like this. A stupid yes. question, get a stupid answer. Now, WWE did try to reintroduce the sleeper hold as a finishing move in 2009 by allowing Ziggler to use it as a finishing move as part of his push. Time. It's over. Unfortunately, fans didn't buy the move as a finisher due to how common the move was, meaning Ziggler changed to the zigzag and incorporated the sleeper hold into his matches as a signature move instead. And number 10, the super kick. See, I just the super kick without question it is one of the most overused moves in modern wrestling. Now whenever you think super kick, you think of sweet chin music made famous by Shawn Michaels. He wasn't the originator of course, but he made the move look so devastating and made it into one of the most famous finishing moves of all time. However, over the years, seemingly everyone began to use the super kick, and most of the time, they don't even use it as their finisher. Wrestlers such as Kevin Owens, Owens on court's another one, boom, and a third. This one to Woods. Oh my God! Dolph Ziggler was looking for the pedigree. Maybe not. Maybe by Impossible. Super kick. Carmella. Carmella sends the cutting oh. super kick, and another one. The Usos went for the bro kick and a super kick. Oh, man. Super kick party, same as you're invited. Meeting in the middle. And Seth Rollins. Of course, coach. And Rollins with a kick to the face. McIntyre. McIntyre still standing. All use the move as if it's a basic kick. Even AEW's The Young Bucks seemingly use half a dozen super kicks per match without ever winning with the once illustrious finishing move. It would be very hard for a superstar to begin to use this super kick as a finisher in today's landscape simply because the move is so overused. But there you have it, guys 10 WWE finishes that turned into everyday normal moves. Is there any more? Let us know in the comments down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.